walking past now, we've seen we've got one, two, three houses with four, five houses boarded up. Six, seven, yeah. eight. Is that what it's like? Yeah, all the way around. Uh, my name is Peter Brown, and my job is to lead Bloxwich Housing Trust. Uh, my, t my job is to make sure that the properties are maintained properly, that people are happy in the area, um, and that we provide the right services for people. Do kids get inside them, Daniel? So, sometimes, yeah. But that, that's when we've been boarded up with wood. Before that, that was glass. Some could have easily climbed in and got the copper pipe in, but they always do. A um, lot of empty houses, wasteland that's just been left where something could have been done with it. Very popular place. Uh, a place that people want to live in, um, a place that's thriving. Sad really, because there are nice houses on the estate. People look after the houses and then you've got the houses all boarded up. Clear up the area so that people really want to stay here. I mean, you've seen next door, you've seen all the terrible wear and nobody wants to come. No, one, no decent people will want to come and live on the estate because of that. Well, at the moment you've got people coming to the estate now. Uh, they seem to, you know, look at the estate and think, well, you know, what a tip. Gosket is very neglected and I would like to see it with lots of money spent on it and people to look after the properties once the money's been spent. I would try and get the empty houses all sorted out and get the metal sheeting down and get all that sorted out. And then part for the little ones and then try and do a bigger area for the older ones. Um, and just make it look a lot better around here and clean it, the estate up. If it was the holidays, you'd see them all playing in the houses. Yeah, in the holidays, you'd see them. They just run. Running through them. Yeah, all out the streets, running the roads. They've got no, absolutely nowhere to go. And the ones of all, people get knocked over and stuff. So they drive around like idiots. Here we go. I'll be called a blessing after. <laughs> this is Gosket Neighbourhood Resource Centre. Well, look, they started to be on here 46 years, August. But the thing is, I think we always get more done with WHG because this is nothing but a rat run. What have we had? We've had nothing. Mm. We ain't had anything at all. What? And in an old fair means, we should now some it shouldn't we? We should. That, you know, when the kids, they say this is like an adventure. Yeah. Come and play up here and play and buy stuff like that. It's disgusting. This is our play area. Set up more things for people that ain't so um, well supported in life, like the kids that ain't got much. You know, set up things like equal opportunity things, basically, because you get some places that only kids with money or kids with high qualities can go. I'd set up things like which anybody was welcome, any age, group, race. Since the large scale voluntary transfer took place in March 2003, I have actually been involved in various consultation exercises that have took place in Gosket. Um, that's included workshops working with residents to try and determine what they would like to see happen, um, uh, the future of their estate, how we can actually reshape it um, in line with what residents want as opposed to what us as Water Housing Group would like to see. Um, we've held um, various exhibitions of the outcomes of those workshops and there has actually been proposed plans that um, we would like to work with the residents to try and develop those to, to actually inform the, the next master plan of the Boston Line project. To me, WHJ should be coming and strumming these down because they'll be mounting if somebody sends a complaint letter in because they're going to sue them because they've parked one of the kids in the road or just parked them in the eye, you know, and cause damage to the road. So I think something needs to be done about this. Fuck much can hide you can hide behind, I suppose. Yeah, you never know. Perfect paradise. Some of the gardens on the MTAs are terrible. They've just been vandalised and they've been used as tips. What a mess the estate is. You know. Too many empty houses, it looks tatty, you know, and people just don't seem to care. Well first of all you take time. Um, first of all you don't expect instant solution. Um, sec secondly, you make sure that you provide the support, you make sure that people do have opportunities and time to understand the, the other issues and the wider issues that I'm talking about. 
um, you make sure that they are able to articulate and you make sure that the people that I'm like me and the people that I work with are listening um, and um, that they are taking those, those ideas on board um, and that they aren't ignoring them, that they are in, in the centre and intrinsic to, to change. Warn Darren, not just the heroes, these the people. I think the people want to know that there's something better for them. They want to know what's happening to their community. And yeah, worn down's the word I'd use. Enthusiastic, I'd like to say, enthusiastic people. They're full of life and community spirit, but they've got no enthusiasm at the moment because they're in limbo. They don't know what's happening to the estate, to their homes, to their families. Um, there's a lot of um, families that live here and when they leave home they rent properties next door to each other or a few doors away. So it's not just their houses they're worrying about, they're worrying about their families' houses too. And it wouldn't be nice to see them have something to be enthusiastic about and I think redeveloping the area would do that. No excuses for there not being anything for the kids around here because I've got plenty of space. We just down use it. I would like Oscar to be a community where everybody has got access to services and jobs and there's some a bit more money coming into the estate, make it a bit more, you know, better for everybody who lives there. And I would like Oscar to be like it used to be years ago, all the stories I've heard off my nan and everything, beautiful. I'd like Gosket to be a better place to live. I'd describe Gosket as neglected and divided. Uh, and I'd like to see Gosket as renovated and united. I think Gosket is very neglected and I would like to see it with a lot of money spent on it and people to look after the properties once the money's been spent. I think that the vision is of a place that's really popular, a place that people are queuing up to get into and not queuing up to get out of. A place where, where, where the young you know, want to stay, where they want to stay into the future with their families and bring their families up. But in terms of my experience about achieving long-term change for communities like Gosket that have social stigma, you won't achieve it overnight, but you can achieve it because I certainly have experience of doing similar work in the past. I think it needs a total redevelopment. Um, I think it needs. Um, it needs to, to have an image, so the estate needs a complete new uplift. People need to recognise that Gosford is, I've got really nice people here and they deserve to live a better quality of life. Let us know what's happening to the estate. That's all, that's all we ask for. We just want to know. I mean, I've got people coming to me, what's happening to our houses, Dave? because we ain't going to decorate our house if we know they're going to come down. People are in eternal, they just don't know what they're doing.